good morning, everyone. Uh, second time for me at FOSDEM, so uh, wow, it's, uh, it's incredible. I've been giving talks for a few years already, but uh, I find you guys are as a, you're a tough, tough crowd. So I'm going to do my best to give you whatever I, I need to give you today about TypeScript. So my name is Davey. I'm a software engineer, and uh, I love JavaScript. You love JavaScript too, right? If you love JavaScript, you do this. <laughs> now, look around you. If you hate JavaScript, you do this. <laughs> now you can squeeze a little bit the room for the people. Just press them in the middle. Um, and uh, OK, so um, I have a bold title. So it was a title to get you in the room. So it's, I'm, I'm happy that you're all here. Write safer JavaScript. What does that mean, safer? Right. So I'm just quickly going to go through the agenda. Um, we're just going to see JavaScript versus TypeScript, getting to love TypeScript, and migrating from JavaScript to TypeScript. But I, I need to answer this question first. What safer means? Sorry? Oh. Well, and define is not a function. <laughs> Say someone? No bugs. No bugs. Ooh, I like that. That's very ambitious, man. <laughs> I like that. That's, say again? Easier debugging? How many people here in the room do JavaScript, really? Very good. Now, keep your hands up. How about TypeScript? OK, so I don't have to convince you, really. I'm just going to make sure that at the end of the session, when I say TypeScript, Everyone raise their hands, and they want to do that every day. So yeah, that's, 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 that's the problem. You know that, right? Uh, cannot read property bar of undefined. Or null is not an object. Or you're trying to call a function. Cannot read property value of undefined. That's really common. Foo is not a function. Um, cannot read property length of undefined. That's, where I, that's, that's the safer part I'm talking about, right? I'm not talking about security and all this stuff. I'm just talking about the fact that you can, you can write code that doesn't crash um, in production. So that's runtime error, right? So we have two things, runtime errors and compile time errors, right? So while you're writing your code, you, you'll be able to see this with TypeScript. With, be able to detect that up front, OK? So JavaScript versus TypeScript. JavaScript is yellow. You know that color, right? That's JavaScript. TypeScript is blue. JavaScript is Whoever is doing JavaScript only in the room is already doing TypeScript, OK? Because TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. The way I introduce TypeScript to teams uh, uh, that we coach, I, told, I tell them TypeScript is a documentation tool. I'm going to show you why I'm, I'm calling it a documentation tool. Yeah, it looks like a programming language. But as you start using it, you're going to realize that it is more documentation tools than a programming language. So that yellow thing, you all, all, all of you are doing it. And the blue part is what TypeScript brings on top of the table. So yeah, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. The way it's described on a Microsoft website is JavaScript that scales. OK? So small demo time. I'm just going to take the, a thing called uh, TypeScript Playground. OK, so you can follow up with, you can follow with me uh, on this one if you want. So um, it's a small, um, can you see this? Let me put it full screen. So let me remove this. So keep in mind that what I'm about to show you is the fact that JavaScript. Uh, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Okay. So in JavaScript, we have class. 
let's say, user. As you can see on the left, on the left here is TypeScript, on the right is JavaScript. The only difference between the two is just the use strict so far. So we're still in the, the, the yellow zone. Everyone, you, you write TypeScript, you're, doing, you, you're basically having one-on-one -on -one JavaScript on the other side, okay? That's the yellow zone. And then um, you want to write, a, um, let's say, a variable const user. We're still in the, the yellow zone, right? So far, so good? So then you will say, what is user? In TypeScript, you can express documentation. You can express that user is a user, is of class type user. Guess what? I'm using type, right? I'm using this to, to document that line. I'm using that class. I'm using a class. But I'm going to show you in a few seconds that you shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't do that. But stay with me for a second. I'm still having a kind of one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't have this anymore. I don't see this thing here, that, that typing documentation. I'm just documenting my code. But look what's going to happen. Here now I'm going to say um, user has a login, which is a string. By hiding login here right away here, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't working anymore. On the other side, we still have the same translation, but this, this isn't working. That won't stop your program to work, but at least you see it right away. That's what we were talking about, compile time. Now, if I want to fix it, I'm just going have to have to add a login here that says Devi. Fix it. We're still in the yellow zone. Now I'm going to take you to the blue zone. OK? Why aren't you happy? Play again? Yeah, it just asked me to give him a, a default value. That's it. That's what he wants, which is a good thing. Now I'm going to take you to the, the, the blue zone. Instead of using a class, I'm just going to use an interface. And then I don't need to, if it's an interface, it's a contract. I don't need to initialize that anymore. But look left and right. On the right, I only have the cost. And on the left, I have, I have this interface here on the left and only the, the user translation on the right. See, I use an interface to type my, 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 uh, uh, my object but I don't overload the final JavaScript that is rendered. So the only thing I really did right here, I documented this, documentation. OK? I'm going to show you another example of documentation that you can do. It's to say, I want the user to go toward a certain direction. OK? So right away, you can see that. It's not happy because you just had a property like you will do in JavaScript. And let me just add that property quickly. Oh, oh well, the, the property you just had has an impact all the way the, uh, in the chain because people are using or they don't expect that property. But you just had that, and then in production, boom, direction of whatever is undefined. OK? But I want that, di that direction here to come from an enum. Or I can say um, enumeration, let's say, direction. OK? So as you can see here, I had an enumeration. And then right away, I have this magic happening here, this line. And, that direct, and then I will just add left um, and then right, for example. OK? So yeah, there is a there is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, translation from enum to something that looks like this. If you don't understand that part of the code, it's okay. It's it's, it's just they're using some closure to create a variable and then they encapsulate the entire thing and then that, that that gives you a way to 
to assign a left and right property on an object dynamically. So now here I can say this thing is a direction that, let's say left, but I'm still having a problem here. So what I'm going to do just to add a direction property and then say this one is a direction, is of type direction. Okay? It's just an enum. It's documentation. Here I'm expressing the fact that you can go left and right. I could have used an object, const, object, direction, and then left and right. That will have yield the same result. But see how you can make it much more appealing here. I'm just going to say const. You see what happened there? It's all disappeared. There is no more overload of JavaScript that you're going you're gonna to give to your customer, because that's the part your customer will use in their app, in the final app they run. But you, in your code, you express something to make the work of your team easier. That's, that's, that's the message I want to pass here, the fact that TypeScript is documentation. We good so far? So let me quickly go back here. So getting to love TypeScript. Um, I'm going to take something quickly here for you. So I have this function, set value. When I say um, set value, I'm going to receive this value. And I say if value, var, real value, and then value here. So if I call it, can you, can you all see this? You good? If I call set value, and I do this, and then I say um, set value um, to be, uh, yeah, here I actually need to say this and then this. That would probably be much realistic. And then here I say Davy. And then here I say uh, number 12. Guess what is happening here? What do you think is going to be yield here on line 9? Yeah. There is a, there, so yeah. Uh, it, that doesn't work. That won't work. Yeah. So, see, now we're already talking about the fact that hosting is going to be in, into play here. It's going to enter into play here. Right? So there is already kind of understanding JavaScript, but as well understanding the fact that are we going to enter here? Is this code is, is written in a sense like this can enter here? First line, nine. Is it going to enter here? No? And then the two, two other cases will enter, but regardless, we're going to have undefined here and then. Dv and then 12, OK? But that, I'm going to have to open the code source and then start making sense of what you're trying to do. I can make it much easier by saying value could be either a string or number. See, by doing those, these two already are solved. But how about this part? I can communicate via documentation that this part is sometime optional. I'm just documenting my code. That's all I'm doing. OK? So once you, you reach that part, there's some magic that's going to happen here. And then, yeah, you can use a uh, good let here that will make your life much easier. But if you do so, you see the scope going to enter in play. And that's not TypeScript. That is just raw JavaScript. So let me just move it here. Then it doesn't crash. And then I can, I can set the value right here. OK? Now, it's not over, because I still need to do something that looks like, what is the possible return value? 
Because if you give me a string or number, I can also have as return value a string and a number. <laughs> I'm just expressing what my code is supposed to do. But here is the thing. The day, the day I discover what I'm about to show you, I discovered that in TypeScript, and I was like, there is no way I'm doing JavaScript again. I'm going to show you that line of code. I was here, and I said value dot. Because I already said string or number, when I say value dot, I only get to string or value, right? But then one step further, I realized that if I have an if condition like this one, and I can say type of value is equal, let's say, string. Now inside here, when I say value dot, that at this moment, my brain just did there is no way you're not doing TypeScript uh, in your life. Just that. Because just with that, all the screen I've shown you, function doesn't exist and whatever, disappeared entirely. Yeah, some, some cases won't work entirely, but this gives you what I'm trying to show you, okay? So I can go much further. I'm happy to talk about it right after. So. What I'm saying here, TypeScript is a documentation tool. It is a documentation tool. So the next question will be, if you, had, if you have a huge JavaScript project, how can you go from JavaScript to TypeScript? There are three steps. Three. The first one is super easy. Just make it work. You know what I mean here? You take, you generate a TS config file, TS config, which is a TypeScript configuration. And then you add set implicit any, which is just a property in your TS config. You just put it at false. What does that mean? It means any JavaScript, it just makes sure that you're still in the, the yellow zone, right? That's it. That's all it does. It doesn't yell at you, but TypeScript is already there. So you're still in your JavaScript project, not TypeScript. TypeScript is just behind watching everything at first. Then you rename all your JS file to TS or TSX if you're using a, a, a React and then Preact and all these tools. That's it. Don't, 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 don't force that onto your team. Just, just do this. They won't, they won't see it. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they will see the TS thing, right? But for them, that won't really change in terms of the code they write every day, right? That's one step. Second one, now be explicit. Don't ch turn the any to, inst instead of false, put it at true. You know what's going to happen? It will just put some red line between the things that, are, that don't have types. That's it. That's all it's going to do. It, everything is still OK. Yeah? You can put that on your team. They'll be, they'll be OK. They will just be like, we, we have new red flags. What is happening here? Then you tell them, let's just take all the, the types, the common types. Like if you're on a node project, just do a, a npm install at type node. Just do, the, do that. This is a common type. It's, they're all known. Once they're in your project, most of the red thing will, will just vanish because it will recognize that node typing, or it's, it's there. That's it. Well, don't do that in two days. Just you do the first step. Then you wait three months. Then you do this part, OK? And then you add typing for third party tools. The library you're using and stuff like that, you hide typing for that. OK? Now, that part, you should leave that for a few months. I'm not kidding. Because the third part is where you get, you get into war. The third part is be strict. It means that you just go in the, the, 
the TypeScript config file, and then you put strict to true. So what does that mean? It means that your project isn't working anymore. <laughs> it just means that now we're going to have to type everything. You're going to have to express every single line of code in your application. That's what it means. Okay? I, want, I, 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 have, I have a repo for you. I have a repo for you where I have those three steps. It's in the, the resource part. And um, you can just take the, the three steps, OK? With that, I hope that um, you'll be able to play with TypeScript a little bit more. I'm going to be outside answering questions. If you want to, to drink TypeScript, I'll be here. If you want to think TypeScript with React, I'm going to help. TypeScript with Vue.js, I'm going to help. I know those things. TypeScript with Angular, I'm not, I'm not going to help because it's already there. So just go and, and do it. And uh, voila, questions? <laughs> One question over there. There's always someone at the back of the room. Who had the question? Hi, uh, thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Um, I uh, would like to know there is a lot of libraries that uh, don't have types for uh, the, for type for TypeScript. So I would like to know how you can generate this. Or uh, yeah, so you have you have um, uh, tools that can basically scan those those um, um, a library and then generate generic uh, typing for them. That's gonna f facilitate the work. But you have a. a um, uh, on GitHub, there is a, a GitHub repo uh, um, and uh, define the type, something like that, where you're going to mostly find uh, whatever you need. In 2012, 13, 14, that TypeScript was a, a nightmare. Guess what? Today, it's, it's top of the game, on top of the game, literally. From the React team to the Vue team, they all use that to write safer code today. But you have tool that can generate types for you. Don't be shy. It's recorded, but we don't know your name. Just your voice. Oh, okay. So yeah. exit is this way if you okay. are in Thank rush. Thank you, people.